please uh, share with us your full names, your designation, and what your role is as an energy planner at Kenja. Thank you very much. So my name is Willie Sawino Ochien. I work in Kenya as Chief Energy Planner and uh, I have a lot of expertise, or I can say a variety of expertise, ranging from meteorology, hydrology, integrated water resources management, climate change, and renewable energy. Please share with us what are your qualifications like, or what courses did you pursue back then for you to have this role as a Chief Energy Planner at Kenjan? Yes, starting from my basic degree where I did a Bachelor of Science in Meteorology at the University of Nairobi, that is in Ichiromo campus. Then I went ahead to do postgraduate diploma in operational hydrology or what we call applied hydrology and information systems for water management. And then after that I proceeded to University of Dar es Salaam where I pursued a Master's in Integrated Water Resources Management with specialization in water and land management. And currently, um, just in the last stages, also again at the University of Nairobi, uh, completing my PhD in climate change and adaptation. Okay, with the expansion of the universities uh, right now, the courses have been initiated in quite a number of the higher learning institutions. Like I know, like uh, Kenyatta University now offers integrated water resources management, and also SECU. That's Southeastern uh, uh, University. The time when I was going for my master's, actually most ideological courses at master's level was, was being offered at the University of Dar es Salaam, and it was being touted as the best institution for ideological uh, courses. And uh, it was through a program which was being supported by a, an organization called WaterNet, which was sp sponsoring uh, various students uh, within Africa. So during my year, I think I was the only Kenyan who was there, and then the other students from other countries. Willis, when did you join Kenyan, and how has your career journey been throughout the years since 2010? Okay, I joined Kenyan uh, on 1st of March 2010. That's after I'd worked in the water sector for almost about 12 years. The time I was joining Kenyan, I joined Kenyan as a hydrologist whereby my task was to deal with hydrological simulations for hydropower generation uh, management. But based on other background uh, in terms of training, I was added some other roles, including the wind power and also solar. And then my title changed from just hydrologist to, to energy planning, uh, whereby I was promoted from hydrologist to senior energy planner. And then after some time, uh, after co actually continuing with my work, then again I was promoted to Chief Energy Planner, which is the current position I hold to date. Can you share with us what is the role of a Chief Energy Planner in the hydrogeneration process and what exactly do you do? Yes, I have a lot of uh, interesting uh, activities in hydropower uh, generation. As you know, the everything which is generated needs a fuel and in hydropower the fuel we use is water as opposed to other forms of generation where you use maybe diesel so on and so forth this water is not just water which is transported there to maybe a reservoir and uh, made use of this is the water which comes as a result of rainfall and uh, my role is to ensure that the water which we have in the reservoirs are available throughout whether there is drought or it is raining. So my role is to ensure that we have sustainable generation of hydropower to support the system throughout. Because hydropower is the only flexible and cheap form of electricity which can respond to the needs of the consumers. The only competitor to hydropower is the thermal plants, but their costs are high. Again, they have another disadvantage of uh, emitting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. I'd like to know, in light of climate change and all weather variations that you're having at the moment, 
how does Kenji ensure that water is available as a fuel to run hydro throughout the year? Okay. Yes, uh, when you talk about climate change, we are talking about two parameters. That is uh, the temperature and the rainfall. So as we know, in many areas all, all over the globe, the temperatures are rising, and that's why we normally refer to it as a global warming, because it is warming. When it comes to rainfall, the rainfall now changes or behaves differently in different areas. And you find of late, with the, within the region or East South African region where we are, these rains come for a shorter period, but of high intensity. So it makes even management of our reservoirs to be a bigger challenge. And this, uh, to respond to this one, Kenyan has come up with some initiatives to get how to manage uh, this climate change uh, menace. So what happens is that we are trying currently even to look at the infrastructure which we have for hydropower generation, to look at how we can improve on them to respond to the climate change impacts. Uh, for example, we have raising of Masinga, which is to absorb about 188 million cubic meters. This will reduce the impact of uh, maybe the, uh, the floods downstream, because if we don't do that, we will continue rece receiving a lot of rains, which will continue to fill our dams, then the dams will overflow, and this overflow end up contributing to the other sources which are leading to flooding downstream and then impacting on the downstream people. So we are trying to see how we can hold this water upstream and this project will result into holding about 188 million cubic meters and this will result in about 81 gigawatt hours a year. So it has the benefit of trying to reduce the flooding impact on the people downstream and also increasing the energy output which can be used by industries to actually contribute towards the national uh, development. There have been mention of the Mutonga Falls and the Low Grand Falls. Please tell us how far these projects and who exactly is responsible for them. Okay, thank you. Talking about uh, Mutonga and Low Grand Falls, these are projects which were uh, being planned by the Ministry of Regional Development Authorities. And I'm lucky I used to work with one of the development authorities handling the projects of High Grand Falls, Mutonga, and also Low Grand Falls. What happened is like there was a concept to do Low Grand Falls, which was to generate 120 megawatts, and Mutonga 60 megawatts. But after review, it was found that it would be much beneficial to do a multipurpose dam at High Grand Falls. The difference between low ground falls and high ground falls is in terms of the heights. For high ground falls, this height of the dam was to be raised higher, and this will also now submerge the site for low ground falls and also Mtonga. So instead of having the two projects, we will only have one large mega project with the capacity of 700 megawatts, as opposed to the previous proposal of 180 megawatts. Another benefit it will have is to store a lot of water, which is more than three times what can be stored in Masinga at full capacity, because currently Masinga at full capacity stores 1.56 billion cubic meters, while High Grand Falls has a capacity to store 5.6 billion cubic meters, and this is also targeted at actually addressing the issues of uh, flooding downstream, and also addressing the issue of climate change, Remember, I said initially that the storage is the solution to get how to cope with the climate change to ensure we have adequate water to be used for a longer period, even during the period of drought. Okay, um, Willis, thank you so much for this. In terms of hydro mitigation, there are plans to set up a hydro risk mitigation fund. How far are we as Kenya or as a country on this? Yes, this is something which has been under discussion for long. I, when I joined Kenyan, I found when it was in the pipeline. Uh, it's a tricky affair, but I think it is the best way forward for the country. This will cushion the generators, uh, the off-taker, and also even the consumers. Because if you can always commit some small funds to ensure that during the critical dry period when hydros are not enough, 
actually some of those funds can be used to even to, co to, to supplement the fuel. And remember, fuel cost is always sometimes a thorn in the, in the bills. So that can be used to supplement that. But even beside that, it can also be used to come up with some initiatives which can actually help in supporting the hydros. Like now we talk about the hydro, the, the, the pumped hydro. Pumped hydro cannot make money only out of the generation because it's a net consumer. And these are the things which that kind of fund can go into it because if we have enough pumped hydros, then it means we may not have to be afraid of the droughts because we'll have enough water to circulate even during the dry period, even if the dry period is prolonged even by one year. In terms of electricity generation, actually it will be still available for, for the country. Though people may say that the cost, it may drive up the cost of electricity a little bit, but I normally think that electricity is one of the critical aspects of uh, whatever we do on a daily basis because even if you want to get water, you need electricity to pump that water. Anything, the phones, the TVs and everything you use in your house depends on electricity. And once somebody switches off that electricity, I think everything comes to a standstill. Mm -hmm. So I think it is a good initiative, though it has not been implemented, but I would actually campaign for it. And that's what will make us to have very, very stable generation and a stable system where we don't experience blackouts every now and then and I think every Kenyan and every consumer and mostly even the industries they don't need they don't want any interruption on electricity supply because there are some processes that once you cut them off because power has gone off to take it back to operational processing may take even more than one hour and that means a loss to various parts of the economy. Mm -hmm. So that fund is critical to ensure and guarantee actually the stability of uh, electricity generation in Kenya. That would be my take on that. Willis, what is the most interesting part of your job? Uh, the interesting part about uh, my job is when you do the, the projections and when you compare them with the, what has been uh, generated, the actual output, then you find the deviation is very small. It means you have really uh, actually achieved what you are doing. And uh, again, uh, one of the challenges which I didn't mention, which I need to bring on board is like, remember, we are doing these things manually because we just use Excel and use the general principles which we learned actually in the books and in school to try and develop e equations whereby we work different scenarios and we look at the system and we say, this is how we want to do it. And when we say this is how we want to do it and it happens that way, it gives us a lot of encouragement and at least it shows that we are doing something. Sometimes we miss. Some, most of the times we are always correct. So if you become correct in many occasions and you miss in few occasions, you try to minimize those miss miss misses by actually trying to improve on the assumptions which you make and even the losses because system has got losses. So it's only fine-tuning these aspects to ensure that always we are as accurate as possible. But what I would love to say and which makes me also always going on is like, yes, I joined Kenyan in 2010 after the drought of 2008-2009. And I think from that time we've never faced power blackout because of lack of hydros. And even during the drought 2011 of Kenyans for Kenyans, for energy sector, there was no power rationing because hydros were still able to stabilize the system. Came the power, another drought in 2017 where we also had another drought. And when I looked at the data, during every drought in the past, Masinga used to be closed for more than six months. This time we only closed Masinga for a record three weeks and it was back in operation. So it actually an encouragement of always continuous improvement in the work we do. We try to learn from the mistakes because the mistakes also teach us a lot of, uh, of lessons and that has made us to improve now and then. What we are now just looking at right now is how we can make those our calculations in Excel to become a software. And this is something which can come even for a tool developed by Kenyan, so the Kenyan can even own it to be used even by other countries. Because I remember the conferences and the meetings which I've uh, attended internationally, 
some countries, including even developed countries, are really impressed on how actually we manage our hydropower plants, which is something which we can take it to another level to become even international and we can share this with even other companies. A good classic example is when we were doing the study for pumped hydropower, where the, Fr the French were comparing the software they are using with our Excel the performance. And our Excel performance was found to be much more accurate than the software they are using. So I think it's high time maybe if we can get away of how to develop this into a, prop, uh, a software which can even have a Kenyan name, Kenyan brand, and I think it can sell also Kenyan actually internationally to show the world that the good things don't only come from developed countries, mm -hmm. but even the developing countries are also are serious about how to go ahead. Thank you. Well, what advice do you have for the younger generation, probably those who are in school or just out of school who haven't made up their minds over their career paths? My advice would be, please do what you are passionate about. Don't do something because somebody is doing it. Or you, do something, or you try to do something because you see it brings money. No, you will fall with it. Do something which you are passionate about and it will, the money will follow. Actually, once you can be passionate about the work you do, do it perfectly well, everyone will be coming for you and then the other benefits actually will just follow. But if you go because somebody else is doing it, remember that somebody else is not you and people are gifted differently. So that would be my advice. So follow your heart, don't let anyone influence you, be it your parents, someone telling you, go do this, go do this, this is having money, this is having what, no, that's not the thing. Follow your heart and you will be actually successful in life.